Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2009 American satirical psychological drama film called Funny People. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Our movie begins with George making prank phone calls with all of his friends listening in. They find it hilarious. Sometime later, George wakes and looks across the ocean from his balcony. He is a successful comedian, but seems tired and depressed. He goes to see his doctor and gets the results from his blood test. He has contracted a form of leukemia and the doctor fears for his future. He is told that it is too late to consider standard treatment, so they should pursue an experimental course. At the supermarket, an aspiring comedian named Ira tries to convince his friend to come and watch him. His friend tries to decline because he is simply not funny. George is at home reminiscing over his greatest hits. He starts to look through some pictures of a girl called Laura and becomes sad. He gives her a call, but she doesn't really want to speak. He apologizes for everything that has happened, but she breezily hangs up. Ira is going over material with his friend Leo. Their friend Mark comes in to brag about his success on a sitcom and tells them that he invited a comedian named Daisy to come over. Mark watches his sitcom with her, but she isn't impressed. Ira comes out and tells Daisy that he's seen her improvement. He thinks that she's really funny. Ira is really awkward around her, but clearly fancies her. At the comedy club, Ira and Leo watch a successful comedian called Randy perform. Leo goes on stage, and due to a no-show, Ira is allowed to follow him. However, George arrives unexpectedly and takes Ira's spot. His set is a little dark, but Ira follows him and tells a few jokes at George's expense. The following day at home, Ira receives a call from George complimenting his comedy and asks for him and Leo to write some material for a corporate gig. Ira doesn't tell Leo that he asked for him as well, but gets to work writing. The following day, Ira gets into a limo with George, who reads his material. George seems impressed and takes Ira with him to the airport, where they fly to the gig. George tells him to go up on stage and do a short set first. Despite his nerves, he manages to make the crowd laugh using the material he prepared for George. George has to improvise, but brings the house down. After the show, Ira is paid $1,000, and George asks him to write for him and do an assistant job for $1,500 per week. Ira is delighted to accept. They go to a party with some girls, but Ira is awkward, and they end up watching DVDs of George's movies. At the end of the night, George and Ira chat and bond. The following day, George tells Ira about his disease and asks him not to be weird about it and to keep it to himself, although he does tell Leo and Mark. George and Ira start to go through his possessions so that he can sell them for charity. At the recording of Mark's show, Ira asks Daisy out for a date. As time goes by, Ira comes up with some good material for George and manages to improve his own set as well. Although George does criticize him for his act being designed to stop him getting with girls, George appears to be getting more and more depressed as his treatment continues. One night, George wakes with a fever. He believes that the medicine isn't working and it's making things worse. They go to the hospital and the doctor tries to explain that the medicine is trying to kill the bad cells but at the same time is destroying healthy tissue. The hope is that the treatment will work before too much damage is done. Ira returns home to find that Mark has been spending special time with Daisy and he is really jealous. He argues with her and they break off their date. Mark apologizes but tells him that he cannot leave every girl for Ira that Ira likes. George tells Ira not to think too much about selling his possessions. He should just sell them and give the money to charity. Ira asks George to tell some others about his condition so that there are others that can help him. Ira can't deal with it and starts to cry. George does start to reconnect with his friends and family. He invites Laura to come over and explains to Ira that he nearly married her. George and Laura have a heart to heart and he tells her that he hates his life. Ira sees that they are connecting, so he clears George's schedule for the day. They admit that they loved each other so much, even though he cheated on her. Her current husband cheats on her as well, but she says that George was the love of her life. Time goes by, and George begins to regret the decision he made in his life. 
George goes to Ira's apartment for Thanksgiving, where things are still tense between Ira and Daisy. Leo finds out that George had asked for both of them to write jokes for him and is angry that Ira never told him. Ira retorts that he was just being competitive, just like Leo always is. At dinner, George gives the toast. He tells everyone that he had a dinner like this with the people 20 years ago, and he has lost touch with all those people now. He tells the guests that if you love someone, do not let them slip away. George goes back to see the doctor, who tells him that he is showing positive results. He may have beaten the disease. George wasn't expecting this to work, but the doctor tells him he should get back to living his life. In the car, George rings Ira to give him the good news. They go out and celebrate with his friends and other celebrities. Eminem asks him what he wants now that he has a second chance. That night, George calls Laura. She asks about his results, but he doesn't tell her. He wants to talk about her instead. The next day, George calls Ira and tells him that they are going to go to San Francisco to gig together. While they are waiting to go on, Laura comes in to say hi to George. Afterwards, George tells Ira that he should tell her that he is better during the intermission. Ira is surprised that George hasn't already told her and even more surprised to learn that he had cheated on her. After his set, Ira sits next to Laura and she explains how she and George met. Ira tells her, that George may now be okay. He didn't tell her sooner for fear of jinxing it. Laura is incredulous as George starts his set, but she seems to settle down and enjoy herself. After the show, she asks George why he didn't tell her earlier. He explains that he thought she was only talking to him again because he was ill. They hug and she tells him that she is happy. Laura takes George and Ira to meet her two daughters. They all have fun together and Ira can see how happy they all are. Laura asks if they want to stay for dinner, so Ira looks after the girls while George and Laura pretend to go to the store. Instead, they enjoy themselves together in another room. Laura tells George that she tried to find someone the complete opposite to him, but her husband is exactly the same as him. The girls ask Ira when George is going to die, but he explains that he is fine now. The girls think that their mom loves him that evening. Laura's husband, Clark, arrives back from his trip early. He meets George and Ira, and things get a little weird. She tells George that Clark hated him until he knew that he was sick, so he needs to keep that to himself for a while longer. As George gets to know Clark, he is astounded because Laura used to claim her husband is George's copy. However, he thinks of Clark as a jerk only. Clark insists that they stay the night to watch an Aussie football match. The following day, as they prepare to leave, Clark thanks George for playing such a huge role in his wife's life and gives him a big hug and wishes him well. Suddenly, his youngest daughter tells her father not to worry as Ira told them that George is better. Clark is angry and asks Laura if this is true. She explains that George didn't want to tell anyone in case it jinxed his recovery, but Clark tells her that she is a terrible liar. She tells him to tell her the truth about his affairs. Clark storms off and Laura claims that it is a relief for her. George promises to stay around for a bit to support her, but Ira worries that Clark will come back to murder them. Ira goes on to tell George that he believes his happiness is coming at the cost of destroying this family. George gets angry and tells Ira that he is an employee and doesn't want his advice. Laura tells George that she is going to tell Clark not to come back. She wants to move back to LA and get her acting career going again. George enjoys spending time with the girls and hopes that Laura will be able to keep them so that he can continue to see them. The guys look after the girls while Laura goes to the airport to see Clark, but Ira tells George that he is going to the store. Laura arrives at the airport and meets Clark. She tells Clark that she doesn't trust him. He confesses that he only cheated two times, which he regrets. Now, all that he wants is to get a job nearby and make a fresh start with his family. She tells Clark that the George thing was just a flirtation. Meanwhile, Ira has been making his way to the airport. Clark spots him and asks what is going on. Laura confesses about her dalliance with George and that she was coming to break up with him, but has now changed her mind. Ira interrupts by saying, that he had come to stop her breaking up with her husband. Laura now tells Clark that George manipulated her with his illness 
and Clark storms back to his house to confront George. Laura yells at Ira for getting involved. When Clark arrives home, he tells George to step outside. Ira and Laura arrive as Clark chases George from the house. George calls Ira a traitor, but Ira tells him that Clark and Laura had already made up before he arrived. Ira tries to pull Clark off George, but when he is freed, George turns on Ira, claiming that he never wanted him to be happy. George begs Laura to tell Clark that she loves him more, but she tells him that she wants to stay with Clark. They have a family. Clark goes back inside with his daughters, and Laura tells George to leave. Suddenly, Clark comes back outside to tell them that he understands that this is karma for all the bad things he has done. But from the bad things will come good. As they leave in the car, George tells Ira that he is fired. Ira tells him that he has learned nothing from his near-death experience and doesn't want to work for him anymore. They argue, and Ira says that unless he can get away from himself, he will always be miserable. As life returns to normal, George plans to shoot a new movie. Ira starts to rekindle his relationship with Daisy and is back working at the supermarket and doing local comedy gigs. Sometime later, George and Ira run into each other at the comedy club. Ira's friends are in the audience to support him. He is far more confident delivering his act. George comes to see him at the supermarket and Ira takes a break to talk with him. George apologizes for putting Ira in the middle of things and admits that he was probably right. George tells him that he enjoyed his set and provides him with some extra jokes. They exchange jokes and laugh together. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.